Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA A plus certification training course on planning a Windows 7 installation. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to go through the requirements of CompTIA A plus 220701 exam, section 3.1, where we need to compare and contrast the different Windows operating systems and their features. And a new one in here is Windows 7. 32-bit versus 64-bit. We also need to look at upgrade paths and requirements that also include Windows 7. And we'll go through all of that in this video and much more. If you ever go to a store or look online at what Windows 7 edition you'd like to buy, you may see that there are quite a few available. What I've done is list out all of the different Windows 7 versions you might run into. And here's the all of them listed on the screen, Windows 7 Starter, Windows 7 Home Basic, Windows 7 Home Premium, Windows 7 Professional, Ultimate, and Enterprise. And you'll notice that I have grayed out the Home Basic and the Enterprise versions. Home Basic is a version that is not available in areas where Windows is already a developed operating system. So developing markets is one where you will start to see Home Basic. So that's not really covered very much on the CompTIA exam. Windows 7 Enterprise is also not specifically mentioned on the CompTIA exam. That's a version of Windows 7 that is specifically for organizations that have bought site licenses and have special licensing for Windows 7. You're not going to see that one on the shelf anywhere. So we're going to focus on Windows 7 Starter, Windows 7 Home Premium Professional, and Ultimate. Windows 7 Starter isn't one you'll always see for sale by itself, but you'll see it often included with netbooks. It's a scaled down version of Windows 7 that is built specifically for those very, very tiny laptop computers that are very, very limited in the amount of memory they have and the amount of graphics they have on their video card, the amount of capabilities they have overall. For instance, Windows 7 Starter does not have DVD playback capabilities, primarily because these netbooks don't have DVD playback players in them, so therefore there is no need to play back a DVD. There's also no Windows Media Center capabilities here either. Those small little machines aren't designed to be a media center. These also don't have graphical capabilities like Windows Aero. So Windows Aero is not something you'll see in Windows 7 Starter. There's no internet connection sharing and no IIS web server capabilities in here either. This IIS web server and the internet connection sharing, obviously more advanced capabilities, not something you would really see on a netbook. And most certainly, there's not going to be any enterprise technologies. You're not going to have a way to take this netbook and connect it to a Windows domain. That's very much an enterprise capability. There's no full disk encryption with BitLocker. There's no encrypting file system on this particular Windows 7 Starter Edition. And you can only get this in a 32-bit version. And the most memory this version is going to be able to see is two gigabytes of memory. That's it. It's not going to be able to see more than that. And for most netbooks these days, they don't even have the capability to have much more memory than that inside of them. So Windows 7 Starter tends to be a really good version for those netbook platforms. If you're buying a computer, a brand new one from a large retailer, it probably has Windows 7 Home Premium on it. This is the version you will find on the shelves and available preloaded onto these consumer PCs. And they have things that are available in them, like DVD playback and Windows Aero, internet connection sharing, and IIS web server. Those are capabilities you recall were not available in the starter edition. Finally, when you get the Home Edition, you've moved up a little bit. The computer's much more capable, and now you have this functionality available to you. But even so, it's designed for the home, just like the name implies. So you're not going to see enterprise technologies like connectivity to a Windows domain or encrypted file systems or BitLocker or any of those enterprise functionalities. What you will see is that the, you can run this on a 32-bit or a 64-bit version. You can do up to 16 gig of RAM inside of your computer and even have up to two physical processors inside of it. So these are two separate CPUs. These are not dual core systems. A dual core CPU is a single physical CPU. We mean two physical processors. And normally, you don't see those off the shelf at a large retailer. That's usually a large server that you're buying that really does have two physical processors in it. But even so, a machine that you have two physical processors, you could run Windows 7 Home Premium, even though it's getting a little bit outside of the scope of being a home-type computer. 
Windows 7 Professional is one you might have at work. It's a version that has all of those same capabilities as the Windows Home Premium, but you can also connect to a Windows domain. So if you're in a large environment, even a small business type of environment that has a Windows domain associated with it, with those directory services capabilities, it's centrally managed for all of your authentication. You usually have a central administrator that handles those Windows domains. You can connect a machine running Windows 7 Professional to that Windows domain. And it supports those domain connections. It supports remote desktop host and encrypting file services. So a number of the enhanced and especially those more professional capabilities Therefore, the name Windows 7 Professional certainly applies. What you're not going to have are some of the higher end enterprise functionality. For instance, the ability to encrypt entire drives, so to encrypt an entire USB key or even the entire hard disk on your computer is something you cannot get in Windows 7 Professional. It's simply not available in that version. You can also have a 64-bit version for Windows 7 Professional that's supporting up to 192 gigabytes of RAM. If you recall, Recall the 32-bit version of these operating systems only supports up to 4 gigabytes of RAM. If you have a 64-bit version and it's Windows 7 Professional, you can go all the way up to 192 gigabytes of memory. If you want the ultimate in Windows 7, then you want Windows 7 Ultimate. This edition is one that does everything. If you've been, at this point been trying to figure out what versions of Windows does what, this version does, has every single capability included with it. So there's nothing that it really doesn't do. I can connect to domains. I can run remote desktop and be a remote desktop host. I have encrypting file system on here. I've got all enterprise technologies, one of which I've mentioned here, which is BitLocker. So all of those things that you would need in an enterprise and things that would enhance the functionality of your operating system is fully and complete within Windows 7 Ultimate. This 64-bit version also supports 192 gigabytes of memory, the same as Windows 7 Professional, and incredibly capable in this version. There are maybe times you also might want to upgrade to enhance your capabilities in Windows 7, and Windows 7 Ultimate would give you all the things that you would ever need in a Windows 7 edition. To help summarize some of the things that we've just talked about with those different editions of Windows 7, I've created this chart, which shows the Windows 7 Starter, Home Premium, Professional, and Ultimate. And I've taken all of those different functionalities and spread them out up here. So you can see Windows 7 Starter, not much of anything, only supports 32-bit capabilities. By the way, no 64-bit support in Windows 7 Starter. You also see Home Premium goes just as far as allowing maybe domain access. It stops right there. And your memory requirements, of course, are right out here to the side. Windows 7 Professional includes the EFS and domain capabilities and increases the amount of maximum memory that you can access in the 64-bit version. And of course, Ultimate is nothing but green check marks and large numbers at the end because, of course, Windows 7 supports everything. The hardware requirements for Windows 7 are actually relatively low when you consider the capabilities of modern computers. The Windows 7 minimum requirements are that you have a 1 gigahertz processor, 1 gig of RAM, 16 gigabytes of free space on a hard drive, and a DirectX 9 graphics device with WDDM 1.0 or higher. That's a driver that is specifically a Windows display driver model. It's a standardization. So for that 32-bit version of Windows 7, those are the hardware requirements. For the 64-bit version of Windows 7, almost the same requirements. You're going to need a little bit more disk space, up to 20 gigabytes, and you're going to need twice as much memory, 2 gigabytes of RAM, to be able to use that, but exactly the same graphics capabilities. It doesn't matter whether you're running Windows 32-bit version, Windows 7 64-bit version. The graphics functionality is exactly the same. If you're running a previous version of Windows and you'd like to upgrade to Windows 7, then you need to be aware of all of the different paths that you can take to take your existing operating system, leave everything in place, and simply do an upgrade and then run Windows 7. Not every Windows operating system can be upgraded to Windows 7, so I've got this chart available. Notice the one at the very top, Windows XP, 
cannot be upgraded to Windows 7 at all. There's no option for upgrade between Windows XP and Windows 7. I can go Windows XP to Windows Vista as an upgrade, and then Windows Vista to Windows 7, but that's an extra hop in between. I could also take all of my data from Windows XP and migrate there with some of the Windows migration tools, but again, that's a fresh install of Windows 7 to do that. When you start looking at Windows Vista to Windows 7, not every edition can be upgraded to a, another edition in Windows 7 either. Generally, you can go the same edition to the same edition. Uh, what you cannot do is if you're running, for instance, Windows Vista Ultimate, you cannot upgrade to Windows 7 Home Premium. That's a less functional version of Windows 7. If you're going Ultimate, you have to go to Ultimate. If you're doing Windows Vista Business, then you have to go Windows 7 Professional to win or Windows 7 Ultimate as an upgrade. These are interesting ones. If you're running Windows Vista, either the Home Basic or the Home Premium, you can upgrade to the Home versions and even the Starter versions version if you're running Home Basic, notice that you cannot upgrade to Windows 7 Professional if you're running the Windows 7 Home Premium version, which I find interesting. You can upgrade all the way to Windows 7 Ultimate. There is a path, though, if you were to upgrade to Windows 7 Home Premium, you can then do an in-place upgrade. In the control panel, there's an anytime upgrade option. And you could, once you have installed Windows 7 Home Premium, simply do an in-place upgrade, an online upgrade to Windows 7 Professional if you had to. So there is a path, but it's a multi-step process to finally get there. And if you were already running Windows Vista, you've got a first upgrade to Home Premium, then you can make the jump to Professional. Let's review some of the things that we've learned about these Windows 7 installations. Our first question is, which Windows 7 edition supports BitLocker? That's that full disk encryption capability from Windows. And if you recall, there's only one edition that allows you to do that, and that's Windows 7 Ultimate. Our next question, how much memory is the minimum requirement for Windows 7 x86? That's the 32-bit version of Windows 7, and it requires one gigabyte of RAM. Our last question, which Windows 7 editions can connect to a Windows domain? If you're in a small business or a medium size or large business that uses Windows domain directory services, then you're going to need to make sure you have a Windows 7 edition that can connect to them. And the versions that can are Windows 7 Professional and Windows 7 Ultimate. Well, that covers our requirements for this planning a Windows 7 installation module, 22701, section 3.1. We've gone through Windows 7. We've looked at installation. We've looked at upgrade. And we've looked at what we can do for taking a previous version of Windows and upgrading to Windows 7. If you'd like to watch any of our absolutely free A-plus videos, you'd like to participate in our message board, send me an email, and much more, you can visit our website at freeaplus.com.